He's been called a powerful new voice on the crime fiction scene by the Forward Reviews. And I am happy to introduce you to our special guest here tonight. His name is Corey Lynn Feynman, and he is the author of the book I recently reviewed on my channel. The book is called Ballast Point Breakdown. Corey, I'm so happy that you can join us here tonight. Oh, thank you for inviting me. It's great to be here and be on the show. It's it's such a fun experience getting to talk to fellow authors and to learn more about their crafts and um, to get a little bit of an inside peek. And be sure to stick around, viewers, because we have some viewer questions that we'll be sending to Corey to be answered tonight. So be sure to hang out for those if you submitted those questions. And we're going to start right off here, Corey, uh, talking about Ballast Point Breakdown. Now, this is the fourth book in the installment of the Raleigh Waters uh, mystery series and it was such a blast and I, I feel bad that I didn't start at number one but you know you did such a great job of introducing this character to me where there wasn't a point where I felt lost in his story or disconnected from him you know, I was able to build this great relationship with him and just carry on right away so if you want to talk a bit more about the whole Raleigh Waters series and what inspired them and um, if you want to put particular emphasis on Ballast Point Breakdown. Okay, yeah, sure, I'd be glad to. Um, the character, Raleigh Waters, um, came to me years ago. I, had, I just got an idea about a guy who was going to be a detective and a musician. Um, I was a musician for many years. Uh, I play keyboards. I don't play guitar, which Raleigh Waters is a guitar player. Uh, as I like to tell people sometimes, Raleigh is my revenge on guitar players. <laughs> Because <laughs> I get to have people beat him up and all sorts of things that I may have wanted to do a couple of times in my life. Um, but uh, there were a couple of things I wanted about him first. One, he was going to be in San Diego. It was going to be a very San Diego-based story. And the second was he wasn't going to be a traditional detective in the sense of being a tough guy. Um, you know, the whole series so far, uh, he never has a gun. He doesn't want to use a gun. He's afraid to have a gun, as a matter of fact. Um, he lives... He's a middle-aged guy, but he's living next door to his mother. Um, and, uh, and he's actually a very good musician, guitar player, but he went through some difficulties in kind of the middle of his career, and now he's, he's not really doing it as a full-time career. And it's hard to make a living a full-time as a musician, as I, as I know. So that's where the series kind of came from. Um, and the first book was based on an internet company, and I had been working in an internet company. So it was really about stuff I already knew. But the further, as further I got along in the series, I kind of had to look at other things. And by the time I got to Ballast Point Breakdown, um, I had kind of sent Raleigh to the far reaches of San Diego County. And I wanted to bring him back to kind of the center of town, uh, to San Diego. And that's why I, how I came up with the Point Loma, um, Ocean Beach area is the kind of nexus of the story. So that's really where it started. And, you know, Getting back to how relatable a character Raleigh is, he, as you said, he's a musician who's a struggling musician. He lives in his mom's backyard. And, yeah. um, you know, that really made him raw and real. Um, you know, we read so many stories about these famous musicians and all this and that. And Raleigh's just a regular guy who goes out to the taco shop and has horchata. <laughs> and, right, right. you know, really just has those very human moments of eating tacos with his buddies and um some of the more amazing human moments that i think we experienced with raleigh were his interactions with his father dean i loved those scenes so much you know i i finished this book over the father's day weekend so it just mm -hmm. had like a little bit of an extra special uh glimmer to it but there was one scene where and Raleigh's dad is talking to him about women and you can just feel Raleigh's embarrassment where he's like I'm a grown man please stop father you know like please stop and you know it was just such a delightful scene because we've all had those awkward relationships right, right. or those awkward conversations rather with our parents and um that was just such a really good scene um who felt those those jitters with him you know what's really interesting in this book is that you have these characters, Raleigh and his father, and then you have these other sets of characters, um, Dick and Janice, or Richard and Janice, 
who have very opposite relationships with their parents. Do you want to talk a little bit about the juxtaposition that was happening in there? Yeah, actually, I think I, I'm, I'm glad to talk about that because one of the, I didn't know this when I started the book, the series even, that one of the themes that's kind of been in the background the whole time is, is families. And, and Raleigh, his parents got divorced. He's never been married. He's, you know, has had difficult relationships. He's never done very well at that. And I think in his mind, he thinks of himself as a big mess. But he goes on these cases and he kind of ends up dealing with people who are even worse, you know, are, are really a big mess, yeah. you know, and that, that isn't always obvious at first. In the case of the family that's at the center of Ballast Point Breakdown, most people would think from the outside they were a uh, pretty, you know, together family. They're very professional. They all have their place, but, but there's a lot going on there that nobody knows about. Um, and so I've always kind of want, I've used that contrast between his parents and Raleigh and the kind of cases he takes on that are, have family elements to them um, as kind of a contrast. And, and the fun thing with this book was this was the first one where people really got to meet Raleigh's father. Mm. Um, the first three books were all about his mom. And in the book before this, we first kind of got a little bit with his dad. Um, so this, it was really fun to write because um, I knew that I knew the relationship had, had to be different than with the mom and I knew it was a little tougher in some ways. Uh, so it was fun to kind of have them go back and forth with each other. It really made me think of um, the relationship we see in the third Indiana Jones movie where you have uh, Indy and Professor Jones going at it where they're both adults and Dag Nabbit, they are adults, but they still at the end of the day have that father-son relationship. And so I, I picked up a lot on that and it made me very happy to <laughs> read it. And it yeah. was so good because, you know, even within just Ballast Point Breakdown, you see Raleigh's character arch with his father and how their relationship develops and grows in just that one book. And you hear it throughout the story how Raleigh's dad wasn't really around much as they as he was growing up because he was in the Navy, which so many kids here in San Diego mm, can identify yeah. with. And you know, going back to the San Diego vibe that's held throughout this story, um, there were so many things that I related to. Um, I wasn't a, a Navy kid, but I had so many friends who were. And yeah, so we would here. see the heart, right? You know, that's just what we grow up around. And you'd see the hardships that they had not having mom or dad around. And at the end of the day, they understood that their parents were serving a greater purpose. So it was very interesting um, getting to read that from an adult's perspective where he's like, yeah, I get that you had to do this. I don't really blame you. I kind of hold it against you, but, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, figuring it out as the book goes along. Yeah, and I think it's important. He's learning a few things about his dad in this book. Uh, in the previous books, he's been kind of this distant character, but in this one, he gets to actually learn a few things about his dad and it, you know, helps him appreciate him a little more. Yeah, and, and that's really evident because you can, you can hear his voice, how it changes throughout ah. the story, which I really, really appreciated. Now, I'm um, kind of continuing on the San Diego theme. Now, Corey, you're a San Diego native? I am. There's not very many of us. I don't know what happens. <laughs> no, no, they like and they're certainly not many disappear. my age because they, you know, <laughs> we were a much smaller town when I was born. <laughs> it's so funny. You know, I always say that San Diego is the biggest small town there is. Uh, yeah. Corey and I discovered in the course of our emails together that we are, we have probably crossed paths multiple times without even realizing it. I mean, San yeah. Diego is just such a wonderful small town feel to it, even though it is a decently sized city. Right. Now, multiple questions came through on the re book review, and quite a few of them had to do with your San Diego connection. So, uh, Jen R. and Amanda P., first of all, thank you guys for writing in. You both wanted to know if Corey was a San Diego native, so I guess we checked that one right off the box. And we also had a bunch of questions also from Jen R. and Corey with a K, who wanted to know if the murders or the events in your book were inspired by events in town. Uh, that's a good one. I often do use things kind of from San Diego history. I usually fictionalize them and change them a little bit just so they'll fit the story. 
Um, there is a t this one is mostly fictional, though there's a character in it, uh, Butch Fleetwood, who I actually based on a famous surfer from the 50s or 60s, 50s and 60s, I think. His name was Butch Van Arsdale, Artsdale. And um, he actually drowned. I mean, he disappeared. He was out uh, surfing one day. Everybody saw him surfing and he crashed and never showed up again. Wow. You know, he wiped out and never showed up again. And that's, it was his kind of character that was in my head. I think the, the character turned out to be a bit different, but that's where it started. Um, and then, of course, I had a lot of personal history in Ocean Beach uh, and some in, some in Point Loma. Um, so that, that was brought into it, too. But I think that was the most kind of biggest bit of San Diego history that's in there that people might not, might not guess. Mm. You know, it's funny because OB has so much character to it. I mean, you can't drive a block and not find, you know, so much inspiration from it. I mean, from, you know, the bright green taco shops all the way down to the surfer statue that's down there, you know, there's just so much history there. I mean, there's the OB Pier, there's the, um, I can't remember the name of the theme park that used to be there, but the imprint of what used to be basically a fair side attraction right there off the beach, right off Sunset Cliffs. It's such a rich neighborhood and it feels like it's been encapsulated in time. And, you know, it's one of those neighborhoods you hope never <laughs> changes. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's one of the most distinctive places in San Diego with the, and, and you know, personality to spare. Yeah. <laughs> Not always personality you want to deal with, but still personality to spare. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the great tourist destination, but keep it to the locals. So. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So um, continuing with some of our other uh, questions that we had here, Jennifer G would like to know if Raleigh was inspired or your private detective was inspired by a real person. And we kind of touched on that, but were there any bits and pieces of Guy Noirs or anyone like that that inspired? Well, him? there, you know, there are bits and pieces of, of he's a, he's a, conglomeration of several guitar players I knew, <laughs> and, and mostly ones that played in my band. Um, you know, we had, one, was, one was rather, he was a, all, all the ones I thought about were, were good guys, I liked them, but they had very distinctive personalities. Hmm. And this one had a very lively, get out there personality and loved everybody and everybody loved him, including all the girls. And uh, this is him 20 years later, was, was what was in my head with, with that. Um, he wasn't as cool as, as Bali is now. Mm. Uh, and that comes from Raleigh, that coolness Raleigh has really comes from my dealings with a lot of musicians, especially if they've been at it a while. Mm -hmm. you develop this kind of, you know, low key dealing with it personality that, that you joke a lot to get kind of through things. You make smart remarks, you, you know, and there's this kind of, well, we're in this together. Let's not deal with all these crazy people out here. So I think yeah. that's part of where his personality comes from too. Yeah. He was almost designed to become this private detective. Yeah. It is sense based on, you know, that background. I mean, there's so many scenes where I think most people in the situations you put him in would be a little bit more panicked or a little bit more concerned. And he's just cracking jokes. And I love that. <laughs> it was such, it was such a good comic relief, but then it also, drove the villains insane as yeah. well because they were realizing that they couldn't get to him right and it's it's his only defense really he doesn't carry a gun he's not you know he i think i had him get in a fight once in one of the books and he doesn't do well um <laughs> you know and it's just not his thing so it's his only way of getting around things is to make jokes or you know divert their attention with remarks or something like that uh, disarm them in a way. And, and some people it disarms, some people do just get mad at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of jokes, and this is, this is the uh, joke question that you may feel free to pass if you so like. Um, Corey with a K would like to know if having the name Corey generally makes you better at most things in life. Uh, it makes you better, let's see, let's see, I think it makes you better at artistic things. <laughs> I don't know about the rest. 
Um, Pre it predisposes you for that left brain, right brain thing. Yeah, right? yeah. I think maybe there's that. <laughs> that. That's about it. And and I don't know how it is for Corey with the K's. You know, I'm Corey <laughs> with the C. Um, though I occasionally at Starbucks, if I give them my name and they give it back to me, the name on the cup starts with a K, but I, you know, it doesn't change me any. So, so <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's a good name to have. I've, I've, I've gotten pretty happy with my name over the years. Well, Corey, this has been absolutely fantastic. Um, ladies and gentlemen who are watching this, please keep an eye out for Corey's books. They are Black Spate Shuffle, Border Field Blues, Desert City, Diva, Ballast Point Breakdown, which were all published, and correct me if I'm wrong, were all published by Constellation Press. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I did, I did want to mention that Const a couple of them were not originally published with Constellation, and uh, I've been very happy. They kind of came in and did the first version of Ballast Point, and they took the old, the back catalog, as we say in the business, and have republished all that. So it's been really great working with, with them. Yeah, that's one of my only great things about them. <laughs> and got everybody, if you want to visit uh, Corey's website, I will have the link to his website in the video description below. If you have any further questions for Corey, if you want to know anything more about his books or where to find them, please leave those comments in the questions below and we'll be sure to get right back to you as soon as we are able. Now guys, I want to thank you again for watching. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell so you'll be in the know whenever our s in production videos drop. And Corey, I want to thank you so much for joining us. This was such a blast and can't wait to read more. All right. Thank you very much. Had a great time.